Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Darla Lucian Studios. I'm Darla Lucian, and with me today is dun, 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 Rachel Lucian. Mm -hmm. We are going to teach you how to put a signature in a single signature file folder covered journal. So we got all our stuff here, but before we get going, I would ask you to hit the like bell, hit the notification bell, subscribe. Yes comment and share share with other crafty people so that they can watch the video too and let's keep this inspiration rolling <laughs> all right so uh blank blank books made out of fun and unique papers are a great way to start your initial uh, journal binding experience and and the reason that we're doing this today is so that rachel can figure out exactly how uh it, a signature goes into a journal and, and i thought you know let's turn on the camera too and see if you guys wouldn't want to learn how to do this too so Rachel's just kind of flipping through to make sure that she has her pages in the right order yeah we'll actually make the holes together okay well that will come later actually you don't have to line that up now yeah. and so um, as a rule of thumb I do three kinds of papers in a blank book I do some patterned or a scrapbook paper some coffee dyed paper and then a solid pattern uh, like a solid no pattern paper and uh, signature is best for me at least with 15 pages or not 15 pages but 15 sheets of paper which means you get 60 pages to write on um, or decorate whichever way you want to do it and so um, my rule is I just divide it evenly so five here five of coffee dyed and five solid colored and so we have gone through and we have picked out our papers. You can see Rachel's got her painty papers, her middle signature. And uh, she's got, you know, her own theme going there, which is pretty cool. And I have kind of a blues, bluesy theme going on here. So you just put your papers in the order um, that you want them. And... And so I'm just double checking to see that I like this order. And then keep in mind that you have a center of your signature. Oh, look, I used an adult coloring page. It's one of my pattern pages. That's the center of mine. All right, so I'm happy with that. So then not everybody does this, but I like to put holes. Do you see that? So one, two, three holes in where I'm going to sew. I do that in every single page. Um, you can do that with... Uh, you know multiple layers at a time. I usually do it up to three at a time and I have made this template Which fits my nine inch journals so you can see it fits the top and the bottom and so the lines come across so that we will find the center and then the top is about one inch in the bottom is about one inch up and Then I have this dashed line because guess what our pages aren't quite the height of the journal, right? So when I'm punching the pages on here so that I can have my signature not all at the bottom like this with with a gap at the top but nothing at the bottom so that it's more centered. So then I use this dashed line to line up the bottom of my signature pages and then that will give me the distance that I need. And so this is just made out of a scrap piece of file folder. So that's what you can do with your offcuts. Always save your offcuts. So I'm going to show you. Um, do you want to just move your journal out of the way for a sec? I'm going to show you how, uh, oh, I wanted to show you how we did the, um, the, <clears throat> so we make the hole with a, a punch and a hammer, or you can push in with like an awl. If this came in a kit called Making Memories, and it's super handy. You can even change the nibs to wider holes, but I like the small one for when I'm stitching. We'll be using this later because you'll need... The, oh, you know what? You can have this. That doesn't go in, Rachel. Don't push that. There, that one's for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's not lose that. All right. So you start off with your regular file folder. This is um, a, a letter size, not a legal size file folder. And so the first thing to do is to get our file folder down to size. So it's simple. I like to have nine... Nine inch tall journal. So, oh, actually, I like a six inch wide journal. So, let's start with that. So, just I'm lining up both. 
to the six inch mark. And I'm going to take off this. And that one is not coming off yet. So what I'll do is I'll flip it over. And instead of lining up to the six inch spot, because sometimes um, it's just not quite even, I just eyeball this so that the cut line that is not quite through yet is lined up on the cut line. And that just makes it easier. Now, save these because you can use them for all different kinds of things like making your template or making bookmarks or what have you and what not. Let me just pull those out of the way here. All right, and then, so now that this is six inches wide, now we just need our height. So I'm just gonna look inside and see if there's anything that we need to consider. Not really, it's gonna have the writing in there, but that's fine. All right, so coming up to nine inches, which is there. Okay, and then the same deal, or, you know, if you're really smart, because I usually do this, but I'm on camera, so I'm not thinking ahead. What does this outlined 11 do? Why do I have it outlined? Because yeah. I did that. Uh, it is outlined so that it's easy for me to find it when I'm cutting pages, because my pages are always 8.5 by 11. Actually, that's a really good question to ask, especially for this video. Mm -hmm. So, huh, I'll look at this one. It has a white paper core. Okay. So yeah, I have eight and a half. I'm going to turn this so that everybody can see. I'm not sure if you can see that low. So on here I have 11 and eight and a half marked because I use those a lot to make my pages the right size. And then down here I have six and five marked because I do a lot of five by six type things too. And so now we have our journal cover and then we have this other off cut and this one comes from um, where it folds here see so it's actually it opens like that and I like using these in journals and making it an over-the-top belly band like that and then just clip it on with a paper clip or you could do it on the side too but you'd need to cut it down a little right so you see that it sticks over a bit or you can use these to make like little tabs or whatever you want to do. Thanks Rachel for cleaning that up. We're not going to punch holes in that one because uh, that would shake the camera a little too much. But I think, I think everybody has kind of the idea of what we're doing there. All right. So the next thing is to bind it or to tie it together. Um, and so for this, you need to do some actual sewing. Let me find my needle. Rachel's already got hers. So. Mine's just a darning needle. Um, but you can use whatever you can get uh, your thread through. So we use, sorry, Rachel, reaching across you there, um, embroidery floss. And I have it just separated it according to color. I'm going to take the blue. What I color would, would you? I would like a gray or purple. Okay, so there's the gray one. And let's see if we got purple here somewhere. I know I made a purple journal, so there must be purple somewhere in here. There's the browns. There's the purple. Oh, yep. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <clears throat> Why is there green? Don't ask, don't tell. I don't know. Well, I asked. <laughs> so, it's the one you should tell. All right. So now you need to pick your, your uh, and use embroidery floss or kitchen twine. So am I allowed to use this color? Yeah, absolutely, got the embroidery floss. Because it just has the strength that we're looking for. So I think mine are mostly kind of in the powdery blues, but medium blues range. So I'm going to see what I can find in that. Yeah, this one here, I think. Sticks out. I a lighter one. This is more of a color to this one. I have stolen this one. That's your favorite? I cannot decide. Right. <laughs> so then you need to find your end. That's always, oh, you can keep those for now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm experiencing the same thing. Oh, there's my end. I oh, see my. it there now. I just made a mess. All right. Technical difficulties. Let's try not to get the little threads into a complete knot, although it looks like that's what I'm trying to do. So you measure like this. You go one, two, three, and then cut. Um, nope. Watch what I'm doing again. Okay, here we go. So you go at the top and at the bottom. Of your, you see how I'm at the edge? It's an actual measurement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, and then cut it. Yeah. Um, two. Mm -hmm. A little snippy snip. All right, let's put away our stuff. You can give me both your packs now. We'll put this out of our, give me. our bag. <laughs> the gray one too. Try not to put too much air in or we're never going to be able to get it into that covered little cubby hole. It's okay. All right. Vacuum seal it. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. All right, can I get you to move your water for a sec? And now we'll get in there. Because that's where that lives. And then it just is out of our way. All right, so thread your needle. I mean, you've done that a million times, right? Uh, sorry. I'm so comfy in here, I'm starting to yawn. <laughs> no, don't do that. Yeah, it is warm in here. You know what? While you're threading your needle, I'm going to go put the fan on. This stuff is really hard to thread, to me anyway. Yeah, it is a oh, smaller. Oh, oh. Uh, you want to make sure all your, all three are through. I think I got it. Uh, this does not look like I got it. Okay, but you have. There. Now I'll just work that. So, um, with embroidery floss, it actually comes unwound into three strands. So we just want to keep those kind of together. Anyway, it's through now. All right, so to make life easy on ourselves, I do. I have a whole thing of binder clips that I'm just going to dump in the middle of us. And it, it, we don't need them yet. Okay, so we start by going into the middle of the signature and the middle hole of the center signature. This is how I do it. No, no, uh, not on the end. Just leave it hang. And you just start putting the papers over your needle. So like that. And then you just stack them right on top like that. Okay. So the middle hole? Start in the middle signature, middle hole. You can do a couple at a time if you're starting to feel fancy. And uh, as you're here, you know, you just feel for where the hole is. Now, if you've got your holes lined up right, then it should look great. Um, um, my apparently, holes don't look great. Yeah, well, and then it could be too that one was in from a different end. See, mine fit better if I flip that one around, actually. Sometimes it's just not... So you can also put, oh, yeah, this would fit better. Okay. you can also put, I'm going to show you adding an envelope as well. And uh, Rachel doesn't have that in hers, but uh, just to throw a little extra something in there. You can also put like doilies or other things into your signature envelopes like that, uh, or longer envelopes that, you know, would stick out both directions, you know, instead of just doing it by the flap, it would just, you know, part of the envelope would be here, part of it would be here. For those longer ones, like you know, where you get your bills in, I'm sure you're familiar. And so it's actually, I find it really. This is another one of those therapeutic type things when you're doing making a junk journal. I just enjoy building signatures. I love putting colors of papers together and imagining, you know, what will be on the pages. And this isn't working. It, it has so. Eh. Oh, see, look at mine. I'm going to flip that one around as well. Most of mine are not good. They're wonky. So mine are very similar if I flip them around. Have you tried flipping some around? Yeah. Okay, let me, let me see. Let me see what I can do. Okay, so I'm going to hold the needle. And so this one is a bit... Okay. This one is a bit longer here. Let's see if it matters if we turn it the other way. See how it's shorter that way? Okay, what do we want to do here? 
So let's start. Let's start with this. So those two aren't real lined up. So let's turn this one around. I thought I had them perfectly. I guess not. Oh no, this one is just not perfect. This rainbow one is the problem. Maybe the rainbow one's the problem. Uh, but it doesn't work either way, so we might have to just put a different hole in it. Okay, let's try this one this way. Yeah, that one fits better. You have two of these beside each other. Did you know that? Yeah. Okay. Let's check it. I just like the coffee paper so much. It smells so good, too. That's the other thing with coffee paper. Coffee paper is lovely that way. Right. Thank you for helping me. <laughs> no problems. I mean, sometimes it's just... So you can see just by doing that that this needs to be turned around, right? It, just being turned around doesn't mean it'll help. Or it does. <laughs> I'll, I'll just be quiet. I have done this a few times, my darling. All right. So... There we go. So now I'm going to let you grab your needle and I'm going to let you keep going. I'm going to wait for you at this stage. Thank you. I don't want to pressure you. Yeah, because I don't get everything. Oh. <laughs> I think right now is a great time for an iced coffee drink. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> oh, you too, huh? Ever since she turned 13, she's super happy because she gets to have a little bit of coffee now and again. I'm not sure if that was the smartest move I ever said, but she's starting to grow up, so you have to give them choices and let them make their own mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm told. All right. How are we doing, Rachel? Not that great. <laughs> let me be honest. <laughs> Look at this. All right, so still pretty good. Let's keep going. Let's keep flopping them on. Okay, so that one needs to go around the other way. Or, no, not that one. Anything but that one. That looks better. This is... I love that painty paper. It's okay if they're not perfectly aligned. I mean, this is handmade. This isn't... It's safe to say that most of them need to go this way. Well, let's try that now. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, I might put them in Watch, the last ones were right. No. Is it? Oh, it would have been fine. So you know, I made you have to turn those ones too. Wasn't that ridiculous? Oh, well, that one is just off a little. Yeah. Okay. And then your favorite little crinkly paper. All right. So yeah. now. And then you put this in. Yep. But we haven't made the knot yet. No knots. No knots. No knots. Okay. Yeah. Through. Okay. Pull it through and just leave it there. It? Yeah, and let's uh, make sure that this is jammed up close, right, so that it's all in alignment. Now we're going to take our, our little end okay. and bring it to the bottom, and we're going to clip our pages and our thread so we don't pull our thread through, because if we pull it through, then we wasted our time. Does that make sense? Yeah, so what do I do? Keep this tight together here. Right? Pull this down to here and clip, and clip it. it. This is a two handed job for me. So, clipped, and then we just toss Pull those little babies down. Alright, so, get your needle in hand. Turn your book upside down. Like this. Upside down. <laughs> and now we do the process through here. Now it's going to be a little bit trickier because it's our pages actually, are in. So, but you can sometimes do a few at a time. Look at that. I came through quite a few at a time. Uh, there's no way mine's good. Look at this. See this hole? So it'll be right here. And that's the hole there. Okay, well, do you need to go push up a little higher then? Mm. Here, let me see. Help. <laughs> okay, so the first things first is to go through there and then see what happens on the inside. Okay, yeah, it's way out of alignment, isn't it? So we're going to make a different hole right there. One layer isn't too hard. Okay, so I think I caught a couple. No, I caught one page. Oh, now it's up. And now it's up. Okay, so this one is the one that needs to have the punch through. And then... 
Man, I think we should just wonky. <laughs> That's okay. This is your first one, right? Yeah. So then what you do, well, now we're just going through here. So we're just going to pull them on top and puncture through. Does that make sense? You keep doing that. Okay. okay. What was the point of putting these holes in the first? Yeah, it does help to put them in so you can see that, you know, even best laid plans don't always work out. My holes, however, have worked. I must have been a little more precise than you, but that has to do with having more experience doing them, right? This is not my first rodeo sewing signatures in. Is that it? Okay. Pull and it pull here. it pull it through to the center carefully without pulling it out of your binder clip. Like that. Right. Okay, so That's all that we need left. <laughs> Okay. So I'm gonna pull this a little bit because I don't have enough to come down. I want. I, that's good enough. Yeah, for you. Okay. That's all I get. <laughs> and I am going to pull. Into here? This and that, please. Can we get mine done too? Alright, so we want just this. So, how in the world did that happen? Oh, because you have your t both tails here, not just one tail. Let's do that. So, just grab one tail. There we go. Stop. So now we got to pull the one that's loose through. Oh, you know what? Let's do it from the back first. Okay, so we'll find the one that wants to come. That's this one. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Flip. Pull on this one and see which thread wants to come. Which side? It's that side. Okay, so you want to leave yourself about a three inch tail yet. Enough to go here without leaving your tail stuck in. So that's easy enough. So I'm turning mine around now too, so I'm the same way as you. All right, so we are, this is the top of our journal. We are at, I believe, let me see. Let me you cannot it. tell that. We came through the top, yes. All right, so now, turn your book around. Now we have our book in the right way. If you remember, we clipped this on the bottom before, right? Mm -hmm. So now, guess what? We go through the, the bottom, bottom hole. Bottom. And this and should be even easier because we're clipped there and because we're stitched in in two spots on the signature already. And most likely going to have to jab my way through. It may be a thing. It may be. So far, so good for me. Now where's my hole? So far, it's not the best. There we go. All right, pull it firm. And becoming more fancy. Mm-hmm. For me, it's really awkward. Bear with me. That's okay. You keep trying. I'm just so about there. Wow, and I went back a dozen pages. Let me just... Ah. Oh, and of course the hole's up here. Let me just... <laughs> of course, hey? How we feel about it. Guess we don't need all of these. We only need one for this. Each. That like is. that. Perfect. Alright, so then put it so that your spine is like this, and then, now, what we want to do, is we want to take this binder clip, and this thread, don't let this thread go through, it shouldn't pull, but we want to clip it to the other side, to the top now, so, that's exactly the same process, except we move this over to here, and clip everything over here. Oops, I can't do that. It's awkward for me. All right. Dun, dun, dun. I want to pull it tight. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason that we want to do it tight and why we want it to go this way is because if you remember, from here, our first stitch was through the middle and then going up. So we want the thread to make a U shape facing the top. Do you understand what I mean? Like that. 
Do you understand what's happening with this one thread? So it's come through and then on the other side it goes up to this hole right away. So what we want to do is we want to move this thread over to this side of the hole as much as possible because what we don't want to do is we don't want to take our needle and puncture through the threads because you won't be able to pull your signature tight if you do that. All right, so holding, holding it like this, okay, we're going to go through the center. Oh, maybe, it, maybe not holding it like that, but I, I, got, just, I got most of it. I want to just jab it through completely. Yeah. Just completely jab, okay. Enjoy, my darling. You jab. Jab away. Oh, and the first one, we have to do that anyway. I'm going to do that crap. You should be able to go up through a hole that's there. It, it, sh it You should be able to go through the hole that you made right beside your previous thread. Yeah, I should. But that means I should. And, uh, wow. Okay, that needs to come back a bit. Back up and try again. If it's going through the side of the paper like that. Don't worry, that happens to me too, but you just ease back a little and go back in. Okay. Oh, she's got her pirate on. She's getting a little stabby. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. A little stabby. <laughs> I need help, but I'm not kidding. <laughs> okay, this is definitely the trickiest spot out of all of it. This is the last step before. So, like I said, our string, or our thread, is being pulled this direction. So, we're trying to go in on this side of the hole. So... I mean, we could just try like that. No, we're not going to come from the right spot. All right, so I got through a few. Let's find out where we ended up. There we are. Okay. So uh, we know that this should be aligned because you went through it once already, right? With the first thread. This one's very loose. It's okay because it was the last one. We will pull it tight once we get inside. And, and so here, here's a perfect example of, whoops, of don't, you know what, just stabby, I guess. Yeah. That's just not lining up real great. Okay. Look at all the time we fixed. <laughs> okay, so we're at this stage here. Okay, so this is important. So our thread is coming. So we have the center thread that goes from the top to the bottom. And this thread comes out on this side, so we want our needle to come out on this side. Ah, oh, crap. I almost lost it again. Oh, All right, so yours is in the right spot, so just pull it through. And pull your needle off. It just kind of went off. It just off. It automatically goes off, right? Find your clip off. I'm going to put our needles together so we don't uh, stab each other or lose okay. them onto the floor. Okay, so now you should have one thread on one side of your, your your thread that goes up and down in the signature. And so if you just oh, pull, you tie them together? pull first to tighten this. This should be like a guitar string. See? Keep pulling until that's okay. pretty loose, right? Now, if you're having trouble, oh, wait, yours is tightening. Okay? If you have trouble, you can always turn yours upside down and, and pull here, right? And tighten this so we're always pulling toward the center because there it's good. That's the deal. All right. See? Okay. So I usually put three knots. One, two, and cross it over. Tuck it through. Pull it through. Just a knot. Cross it over. Tuck it through. <laughs> Sorry. Three times. It's just the way you were doing it. I do it fast, and I don't even think about it. I can do this with my eyes closed, tying the knots. All right. So now. I wish I could. Yeah, make it nice and tight. The first one especially needs to go right down real hard. As tight as you can make it. There you go. Good. So now your signature should be secure. See that? There's no looseness at all. That's what you want. A good, firm knot. There. Well, that's looking good. How are how happy are you with your... How, are you, how satisfied are you with your service there, Max? Uh, um, 
if I could change something, it'd be the papers. And the <laughs> but it's I mean, too late nothing now. can be perfect. All right, so let's. So you mean where the holes are in the papers? Yeah. Okay. But look, you did an excellent job. That is tight in there. So two two extra things that we can do at this stage that's decorative is we could either put something on the ends like beads or things, or we can make just a little bow in the center. It's just simple to make it look cuter. You know, you could do something like that. I want to put like a little bead. All right, so we are not set up for beads right now though. I just wanted to give that option. Then the other thing, because <laughs> my beads, I don't even remember where they are at. I think they're under something. Um. The next thing you could do, and I like to do this because I hate having journals poke me while I'm using them. Like if you're journaling or putting stuff in is to, to round the corners. And so that to me just adds the finishing touch. At this point, you could also put on, if you don't want to do that, you could put on um, corner protectors, you know, like those metal ones that uh, you can get online. I don't have any of those right now, so I, and I don't mind not having the extra weight on the corners. I don't mind having just rounded corners. That seems to work for my purposes fairly well, so if you want to do that, you can. You don't have to, but you can. I am so happy with what I've done. And that is simple. And easy. Uh. <laughs> and the cool thing is, is that these journals will be available on Etsy. Isn't that right, Rachel? You're planning yes. on selling that one? So, just so that we're clear, uh, mine is going to be number 15, and Rachel's will be number 16. And you'll see it in the listing. It will say, oh, that uh, 16 and 15 are there and I'll describe you know blue cover blue and tan in the inside and and Rachel's st still struggling she'll get those corners yet yeah. oh careful we're gonna smash the camera that's loud uh, yeah exactly all right so I hope you guys figured some things out uh, got some ideas of what you want to do I've done these quite a few times I love these little books I've done these as um, I've used them as like a daily uh, journal for um, like, like a daily writing journal. So like a November or December daily, actually not December daily, cause I do a Christmas one, but, uh, like a November daily or whatever. If I know I'm particularly busy and I want to have extra writing papers along, this also would work good as a travel log. And especially if you put an envelope in, because then of course you can always tuck stuff inside, inside your envelope. Right. And so that's super handy. And so, yeah, there's the other flap. And so you can glue you can glue part of the flap down and use it as a tuck, or you can just tuck things in like that. Or, you know, you can leave it the way it is, or you can tuck it this, you can t glue it this way so that you have the little wolves and you can tuck on that side, which is kind of fun. So this is gonna be the only journal that actually has an envelope in there. So, like I said, 15 pages, five pattern, five coffee dyed, and five solid color, and then if you wanna put a doily or an envelope or something in for a little extra, and uh, use the embroidery floss because it's super strong or the kitchen twine again they're meant to be workhorses and they're good and sturdy and they will hold your signature longer than the pages will stay you know what I mean uh, like a hundred years later the thread will be there but the pages will be <laughs> returned to mother earth all right well I hope that you enjoy this we'll get these into the Etsy shop right away and you can go check it out thank you so much for taking a look have a great day everyone thank you